Hello everyone and thank you for joining me. For today, the fountain pen that I decided to use, it's something that I have discovered relatively recently, about three months ago or so. I had no idea that Pelican made this fountain pen, the style model. I discovered it on uh, Amazon, but the price it was selling felt a little bit too high for me, for a fountain pen that seems to be more on uh, the same level with the Pelicano version. I think this pen uh, has been on the market for a while, but I just found out about it. So I went online, did a little bit of search and discovered an online European fountain pen store that has these for sale at a much better price. Doing the Euro to Canadian conversions at that time, including the shipping, turned out to be at least with uh, around 10 Canadian dollars cheaper. So I got it. By the way, I started to include the prices that I bought the pens at in the description below if you are curious about it. The pen is very simple and fairly clean. It feels uh, like it's more marketed towards beginners or possible kids because of the bright colors that they have and well I guess the plastic construction. It definitely feels like another Perlicano, just with a different shape, especially since it seems like both are used in say nib and feed as far as I can tell. Unfortunately this, just like the Pelicano, is designed to only take cartridges, no converters. The way the section is designed inside is to allow only the thin lip of an international converter inside of it. There is like a groove channel where the cartridge goes inside. Kind of a bummer. I consider this the biggest uh, letdown on this fountain pen. The pen does come in a simple cardboard box uh, with one large international cartridge included. And uh, that is going to be the ink that I'll be using today. I think it's black. I hope it's black. But I guess we will discover this together. The pen feels actually very nice in hand. I like the weight uh, and balance that it has. Um, and since it's most uh, out of plastic, the pen is pleasantly to hold posted or unposted. It is a little bit more back weighted when posted, but not that much. Or at least I do not feel it that bad. One thing over the Pelicano, it does post a little bit deeper. The battery is kind of cool uh, on it, I like it. It twists into place with a secure click, which I do like. The barrel will definitely be held in place nicely and hopefully securely and should not uh, open up on you by mistake, just like the Pelicano version. Another thing that it has over the Pelicano, and uh, some of you might love that, it does not come with a tripod shape section. It is nice and round, with uh, rubber inserts where your fingers rest. I guess I should mention that uh, what you see black on the pen is more of a rubber insert and the neon green color is just plain plastic. One feature on the pen that I'm not sure how much I would like it, it's uh, the underside of the section. There are some rubber ridges uh, that will uh, ride on your finger. Not sure how pleasant they will feel after a long writing session. The cap is simple, full push type, and it comes with a plastic clip uh, that seems to be quite uh, robust. Better than the Pelicano in my opinion. And finally, the other nice feature of the pen that I like, it does come with an ink window that is actually a little bit larger than the Pelicano. And on to the writing part. The ink uh, in the cartridge actually turned out to be a uh, blue ink, not black. The nib, however, it's extremely smooth and uh, well behaved uh, and juicy, at least with the ink that uh, it's in this cartridge. That medium nib feels more like a broad to me. Not sure how uh, much I'm gonna like it, but we will see. The good thing about it is that on reverse, the line is uh, more fine and I will either use it mostly on reverse or I will jump between both sides depending on what I need. It does seem to fill in the space uh, on the page uh, with ease, so who knows, I might use that to my advantage. But uh, we will see how well it will be once I pull out the Fabriano paper that I usually use.
quantum pens usually tend uh, to feel a little bit drier on that paper. One odd thing that I notice is that there seems to be some play between the section and barrel. And since uh, the barrel is kind of a kid uh, on the section, I can't really tighten it more. So that might uh, might get annoying, especially um, especially if you tend to have a heavier hand. And uh, I think I'm preferring this pen unposted. It does post okay. But it's not fixed in place. Uh, it wobbles side to side a little bit. Overall, not bad. Beautiful neat that is for sure. Very pleasant for writing with a little bit of bounce, but no line variation. A couple of days ago, I just realized that most of my drawings for the past couple of weeks um, have been uh, in portrait mode. It's uh, been a while since I did a landscape view, so today, we are going in landscape mode. I don't know why I draw more often in this view. It fits nicer and tighter on the screen, to be honest, to have it in landscape. I think, uh, now that I think about it, maybe it's because of uh, Instagram. I do create reels out of my thumb time lapses and uh, post them, uh, but uh, I do have to crop them in a square format. Much easier, I think, to do a reel out of a portrait. Uh, mode drawing maybe i'll give it uh, a try this time around and see if uh, it's better or not by the way i started to update my videos on rumble.com platform as well um, if anyone prefers that platform more than youtube uh, i i'm there now too not switching or anything just keeping my uh, options open i guess I'll um, leave a link to that channel if uh, anyone is interested and uh, you can go and have a look around. I've only posted three videos with this one included. If you're not interested, no worries. I just thought I'd uh, mention it just in case anyone cares about that platform more than this one. Anyway, going back to my drawing for today, I have to say that I came uh, in thinking about a specific drawing that I wanted to do, but... Uh, that uh, medium nib on the fountain pen kind of uh, switched my brain a little bit and uh, decided to default to another drawing. That got inspired by the uh, other x-ray pictures that, uh, well, I keep on looking here. No idea what kind of flower this is, but I really liked the composition of it. Um, I, I hope it's an actual flower or and uh, I'm not just copying somebody else's uh, artwork. I mean, nothing wrong to be uh, inspired by it, but uh, I don't know, I feel dirty about it if that's the case. <laughs> I think I took the idea from an actual picture and uh, I kind of tried to develop it into something a little bit more different. As I was expecting, the knee bending felt a little bit more thinner and drier on the uh, Fabriano paper. The reason why I keep on doing the writing test and the drawing Different paper reacts differently with the ink and nib that the pen is using. Almost universal so far, at least in my case. I find uh, all fountain pens a little bit drier on the Fabriano paper and gives a more consistent uh, line, which is good in a way. I guess that's proof that good quality paper matters, I guess. At least when it comes to fountain pens and their ink. Oh, and finally I got a boom arm for my mic and it's off the table. I don't have to be as careful with my hands and what happens on the table. I think this will solve uh, some of my muffle issues when I record uh, live as I do things. The objects that uh, were in contact with the table were louder than me. The scribble session that I posted last uh, weekend made me realize how bad it is. Hopefully this will improve on uh, my videos a little bit when I will make my next scribble session, whenever that will be. Speaking of those kind of sections, uh, I have a question for you, but I need to set you up for it first. As uh, I have mentioned a few times in the past, one of my other hobbies is photography and I kind of miss it to be honest. The cold is starting to settle in and uh, I assume winter is soon to follow around these areas. And uh, this gives me great opportunity to start taking some pictures, especially in black and white. 
I prefer taking pictures of nature and uh, especially during winter times of, of uh, leaves and other berries and fruits that I find standing uh, still in the tree or even dry plants poking out of the snow. I do like macro photography and uh, isolating my subject from everything around it. And I do prefer uh, a very thin depth of field if possible. It is one of my favorite things to do, especially on film. So, uh, after all that long setup, my question will be, whenever I get a chance, if I do get a chance, would anyone care if I would maybe make a video on photography once in a while, rather than fountain pens? Or are you in just for the fountain pens? Well, okay, you got me. That was two questions, not one, sorry. But both valid, though. I'm curious to, uh, to hear your opinion, if you have one. Anyway, going back to the fountain pen with some final comments before uh, uh, basically closing my ramblings. I have to say that I kind of like it, but I do find it very hard to recommend it. That is because of the little things that I personally find a little bit annoying about it. First of all, like the Pelicano, you cannot use an actual converter. I know for some, this won't be a real issue and maybe for me not that big of a deal too. Uh, but it's still a little bit annoying. The most annoying though, thing that I find on uh, the fountain pen after using it for a while, it's the play between the section and the battle. Not sure if it's just my copy or this is like a thing for all of them, but it is noticeable and uh, gets on my nerves after a little bit. Not being able to tighten it more to make sure I get rid of it, it is a little bit frustrating. Other than that, I think it's an okay font pen as a starter for kids or students even. Just make sure you shop around and get the cheapest price you can get. Don't pay more than $20 Canadians on, on this thing. Anything more than this feels way too expensive. I've seen copies of this thing on AliExpress selling for like 70, 80 Canadian dollars one. Don't buy it. Trust me, you'll feel sorry and you'll have regrets. Anyway, this is the end of what I have to say, I guess. Uh, and as usual, enjoy the rest of the time lapse if there's anything left. And if you have questions or comments, leave them below and I will try and get to them as soon as I can. Thank you for joining me today. Hope I'll see you next time and I wish you all the best and a wonderful day or night, whatever you are. Take care. Bye.